Hello and welcome to episode 29 of TNA Top 10. How you doing, bud? I'm Terry. This is Andrew. Let's uh let's do it again, bud. Yeah, early this week. Yeah. Uh you know. I mean, we're here, we're watching a lot of collegiate sports, trying to trying to keep things above water, I suppose, for both of us, you know, at work and, and wherever. But uh things are good. It was the uh nephew's twenty first birthday today. And uh Let's not be naive. He's had alcoholic beverages before. But this child decided we were going to the Olive Garden, which is mid at best. We got a Mexican grill that I love, Mezcalito, right down the road. They serve the big margarita towers. And he says Mexican food tears his stomach up. And if he's going to drink, he can't have Mexican food. So we end up going to the Olive Garden. We get there at 2.30 because his brother's working till 2. We wait 30 minutes. For some mid-ass pasta. And I had the uh, taste of Italy there, Terry. So, you know, a little fettuccine, lasagna, and then the the chicken parmesan gimmick. Well, the chicken parmesan, the cutlet, as asshole Andy would say, the cutlet was uh, a little dry there, Terry. A little dry. A lot like watching the Yankees in preseason. It's a little dry these days. But uh, they're still America's team, God's team. But anyway, no, nah, in all seriousness, he decided he was going to order himself a drink, and it was some fruity cocktail with vodka in it. And the last time I checked, the only people that drink clear liquor are wealthy white women on diets. And that, thank you to Ron Swanson, is your lesson on alcohol today. But how are you there, buddy? I'm okay, and we should point out that the producer is not here because she's gallivanting around Europe, as she I does. Th- I'm pretty sure she was in the Louvre today, so uh, she's not missing our things. asses. <laughs> yeah, we got pictures of bare boobs and penises on statues today. That's that's what they have over there. Yeah, armless, armless women with boobs, apparently. Um, so we're glad she's having fun. Looks like she had a safe trip over. Mm-hmm. Um, the food looks like it's been awesome, amazing. Um, City of Lights, Paris, I know, was on her bucket list. She got to go with her mama. And that's a big deal. That's a bit. Her yeah. mother's getting up there in age, as is her father. You can appreciate that, Terry. Yep. Uh, you have the chance to do things with your people that you love. Do them now. Don't wait. There's not necessarily tomorrow. And we always get there when we tell you, love your people. Be crazy about it. Mm-hmm. Make it weird. But the thing is, there is no tomorrow promise. So they had the opportunity to take this trip. I'm so happy for her that she got to experience. Now, Paris, from what I understand, is a filthy-ass city. But she'll get she'll fill us in on all that next week, I'm sure, when right. we bring her on live. She she doesn't have a choice. She may not know it yet, but she's coming on the show <laughs> to tell us all about Patty. But uh, now, nah, buddy, you dumbass. you know we're gonna miss her. You're a dumbass. <laughs> so I just did that in, in <laughs> celebration of her because I've got the little list of noises here, and um, I thought she might have thrown something in by now. Uh, you know that are that are telling us to hurry up. You know, wrap it up, boys. Right. But we we really will miss will miss uh, miss her. We are going to try to stay on time. We have a goal for the show. I we had a lot of information this week, buddy, and we left off yeah, collegiate wrestling. To squeeze it in. We'll mention it at the top, though. <laughs> Seriously, Penn State three time national champions in wrestling. Kale Sanderson, the coach there, former wrestler a dominating performance most team points ever and wrestling we love pro wrestling i love collegiate wrestling i don't know about you but uh that got overlooked because of all the basketball (laughs) yeah and and there's a lot of stuff going on a couple of mini rants ahead of us but you know I, i was thinking about we had the producer for a couple of weeks and now she's gone and we've got to try to figure it out for ourselves and you know, we're probably going to go three and a half hours because we don't know how to do things without her. And it reminded me of an episode of Andy Griffith where Aunt B was going to go on the road for something. I don't remember what it was. I could have looked this up, but, you know, I don't do that kind of thing. I just go from memory. And Opie was pretty young at this point. And she was leaving, going out the door, and she's all worried about them getting by without her. And Andy's like, we'll get by just fine without you, Aunt B. Right, Ope? And he's like, yeah, sure, Paul, you know, and all that stuff. Well, she's about to come home a few days later, and um, they're really rushing around to get the house looking all nice for her when she walks in. And finally, they get done with five minutes left, and they sit down on the couch, and he goes... Ooh, boy, that, that was rough. 
I'm glad we don't have to do that all the time. But this is going to show her we can get by just fine without her. And then you can see the, the gears turning in his head, and he goes, you know what, Ope? We got to dirty up the house again. So they start running around, throwing stuff everywhere, and she starts looking in the window as she comes in, and she thinks that they're trying to rush to clean up. And it worked out perfect. So that's the way we feel about the producer. I don't know that we can clean up too nice without her. We'll see what happens. But um, it may go three hours today. It's a good good thing we got a, a early start. I would say we're wide open. Who cares? You know. Uh, but she does. She wants us on time. She wants us to meet our goals. So we appreciate her. Have fun. We will talk to her next week for sure. Uh, and God bless technology. Let's be honest about it, Terry. We've actually been talking about you know, to her, with her, yeah, the whole time she's been in Paris, but uh, wouldn't have been possible years ago. You you just had to wait till we the wouldn't know each back. other at all years ago. Not I mean, at all. We would have not never met. It's fantastic. Nope. But you but, know what else would have not happened years ago? We wouldn't have started about, the damn baseball season in South Korea years stop, ago. But... Stop! 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 The baseball. Well, whatever you, you call it, it wouldn't have been started in South Korea. And then not only that, it's not like it just started in South Korea. The Dodgers and Padres go over for, I guess, three games, two games. I don't know what it was. and Because it, it's not time for me to pay attention yet. That's what I'm saying. Baseball season starts on the 28th. They've already screwed that up because it's supposed to be a day game in Cincinnati to start the season every year. It just keeps getting worse. Now they're changing the rules up on us. Yeah. So this is one that I, I, you know, I've been out of baseball for a while, but Giancarlo brought me back, Terry, three home runs in a preseason game, one of which was a grand slam, hubba hubba. He knows how to swing that bat. But uh, anyway, the great stick band from what I hear. Rule changes in baseball. Blocking the bag or the plate is now an automatic safe. Yeah, even wasn't, for the middle infielders. I mean, wasn't that like part of the allure of the catcher in blocking the plate when they're sending the runner around? Well, that's second? been kind of the rule to some degree for a while. Are they, I guess maybe they've gone even farther. Even if you have the ball, you can't block the plate now. Is that what yeah, we're, we're saying? Yeah, we're talking about if they block once. I sent you a couple clips in, in Instagram. If you block one bit of the plate or the bag, because it, it, to your point, first, second, or third are also included, then you are um, impeding the runner's advancement, and they automatically win the bat. But if I'm the catcher trying to throw out a runner stealing second, that's always been part of the game is blocking yeah, the bat. Absolutely. Always been part of the game. Got a little bit um, of conflict here because I had two major injuries playing baseball. One of them, the catcher blocked me going into home, and I fell back and broke my wrist. The second one, I was sliding into third, and the third baseman went to a knee, and I tore my ACL. If these rules have been in place, maybe I maybe I would have had a major league career. Well, oh yeah, yeah, because you swing that. That was back. the only thing keeping me from doing that. You know it was. Look, but, listen, but listen. I was a violent child. I know you find that hard to believe. They switched me all. from baseball to football pretty early. But even when I played Little League Baseball with the pitching machine and with the pitcher, if you were taught if the catcher was blocking the plate, run him over. Man, you know, you've met me. I just cleated him. I ran him over. I did did not slide. (laughs) I was not (laughs) sliding. And then they found out maybe this guy's a better defensive tackle than he is a right fielder (laughs) slash six hitter. So, uh I ended up switching to football because apparently I was just a little too violent. But I don't know. I don't particularly like the rule changes. We've already seen a couple of ejections. That one umpire that you love so much. What's his name? Uh, help me out. Angel real quick Hernandez. Before. Angel obviously makes the game about himself. I mean, I don't know what this guy is doing. Now, here's but... a little blast from the past. When we were talking about Mongo, he was the umpire behind the plate that day where Mongo called him out from the press box. Same guy. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he's already throwing batters out. He's, you know, you're looking at him wrong. Oh, and there's another rule real quick that I, I want to go, because this, this I think, actually involved him. The pitcher 
stops the pitch twice, if they stop the pitch the third time and don't throw the batter out at the base, then like if you're going to throw out the baseman at third Mm -hmm. or the runner at third and you throw, you pretend to throw it, you pretend to throw it, that's twice. You do it a third time, you don't get them out, they automatically get the base. And this right. this resulted in the runner scoring, um, which, again, to me is crazy. I mean, what are well, they trying to the accomplish? Rules. I mean, yeah. all of a sudden, the runner knows all of this is happening. And it's not just that. It's any detachment from the pitching rope. So if yep. he just kind of he just kind of video I it sent you. Yeah. yeah, the video I sent you was the guy actually pretending he was going to throw, the, right. throw the ball out, throw him out. And the runner realized that it already happened twice, so he takes this humongous lead, right? And the pitcher disengages. The runner gets back, but it didn't matter because whatever the results of that play is, the minute, like you said, he stepped off the rubber, he's disengaged from the pitch. It's a, it's an automatic advancement to the next base, and in this case, it scored. Uh just, just crazy. But that, you know, the the umpire thing. Just call the plays, just or just call it. It strikes and it falls, you know. And 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 the fact that you're getting questioned for calling the same pitch once as a ball and once as a strike has been happening in Major League Baseball for a hundred fucking years. Get well, over if it. There's it, any ain't, sport it ain't worth that, throwing them out over. You know, if there's any sport where referees and umpires can be automated, it is baseball. You really so, think so? Let's think like a. This out. No, you think CGI could do it? Well, what I'm saying is like tennis. Tennis is doing it to some degree, but. You know, we got the cameras that know what the strike zone is. They can do a comparison of when the ball's reaching the base and when a foot hits. I don't know if it's coming. I know that they're trying it in the minor leagues, but, you know, I know a lot of people say it takes away from the game. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I hate all the rules changes. I, I wish it was like it was in the 80s. I say that about a lot of things, though, so it's probably just me yelling at clouds, but. Speaking you know, of my... wishing things were like the '80s, let's talk some wrestling, homie, because let's that's something you're going to have to do all the talking. On. Let me tell you, I have not watched any. Uh, I haven't watched Raw or Dynamite or anything in like two weeks. You're going to have to catch me up here. So why don't well, you tell I'm, us I'm, all about? It? I have no problem with that main event, you know, because I know women's wrestling is near and dear to you. Yep. Featured your girl, the last kicker, old Becky Lynch, the man. And Nia Jax, great back and forth match. Nia made Becky look very strong. Becky wins with the manhandle slam, believe it or not. Um, pretty, pretty big woman she's moving around. But Man, that's crazy. Table spots, tech spots, you know, all of that sort of thing. Um, Nia ends up losing. Out comes Rhea for the, the face off. You know, you get the stare down. But. I think that, you know, more importantly than the match itself, this is a main event in a program that's been running 30-plus years on virtually the same channel. They went to TNN for a little bit, but but USA, and it's being closed by women. You talk about the advancement of women in professional wrestling. When Raw is War was wrestling, we were seeing Alundra Blaze and Bull Nakano or you were seeing Luna Vachon and Sherry as managers, you were not seeing a very competitive match as a storytelling device going to WrestleMania. So they've, they've main evented WrestleMania. The women have their main eventing raws regularly. They're taking up segment spaces. They have Women's their own rest- pay-per-view at one point. It's a big deal. Women's wrestling is a huge deal. Um, at least in I know the WWE. You're- You're a big fan of it. Yeah. And, you know, we always shit on Vince, but Vince made women's wrestling and maybe it was Stephanie. Let's let's give credit really where it belongs. But um, women's wrestling would not be what it is without without WWE because they are wrestling. They're the brand. WWE, whether you like it or not, is the brand. So what does every other company do? They follow in suit. Quite frankly, the NWA has had far superior female wrestlers than um than adew and even wwe prior to you know 2016 17 right but you look at murderers row inside the wwe and you try to figure out where everybody fits because they are all so good um they are all so good be that oscar or charlotte or becky or bailey or naya 
or Rhea. And you just keep going on. And, and I miss the world champion that's taken Bailey on out of damage control. But there you've got Dakota Kai and Asuka and uh, whatever her name is. It's not Shotzi. It's the other one. And I forget. And it's I don't mean to, to forget, but I forget what her name is. Because um, I watch wrestling in fast forward and on social media a lot of times because there's so much of it. You're talking three hours of Raw. Two hours of Dynamite, hour of Rampage, two hours of Collision, two hours of SmackDown, and that's just WWE and AEW. That's a lot of damn wrestling. So, anyway, I wanted to get your thoughts because you've been a longtime fan, as have I. We grew up on the NWA. Baby Doll was not a wrestler, but she slapped some people around. Uh, Dark yeah. Journey, not a wrestler, but she slapped some people around. Uh, Jimmy Garvin's wife, Precious, not a wrestler, but she'd slap some people. And, and then you got Medusa finally with the Dangerous Alliance. But women's wrestling in 30 plus years, this is what we're getting now. And it's competitive. And in my opinion, and I want yours, as entertaining as anything you see from the men. I would almost go as far as say in the WWE more entertaining. I think it's dropped off a little bit in the last year or so. Some of the bigger names have either been injured or out for other reasons or have left the company. You know, we talked about um, Mercedes Monet being in AEW now. So obviously Sasha Banks is not in WWE. So there's a big loss. You know, Charlotte not being around as much. Uh, Becky being gone for a while to have a baby and all that stuff. So, I mean, that's the last several years. But um I have more interest in the women when it's good. When it's really good, I would rather see the women than the men. And we I can think agree. there's probably more men to have those main event matches still. But um, the best of the best, I think I'm going for the women. You still, I mean, they've leveled up. But uh, you talk about leveling up. Gunther, the Intercontinental Champion. The man, as far as I'm concerned, uh, really has gotten himself in great shape, great cardio shape, had a nice segment with Sami Zayn, and I wanted your thoughts on this. Production, they do a long shot from Sami Zayn, one continuous shot, mind you, from the ring all the way to the back after the interaction with Gunther. Fantastic. No camera cuts, no no Kevin Dunn magic, as they called it. Um Interesting to see that even though Kevin Dunn is gone, you know, that production, though, they're making some different choices. And I personally like the long shot. I don't know what you would think of that. But again, because you said you may not have seen it. One continuous shot from the end of the segment all the way to the backstage area without ever cutting the camera. And I like that. I mean, I think about when when they would have Andre and they would come up from underneath him just to make him look even larger and that kind of or, thing. It's the or Earthquake, things. earthquake where they would shake the camera while he was walking oh, yeah. down the aisle, you know? <laughs> right. you, just Like you said, just those little production touches that make it... Plus, the thing that people have bitched about on social media about WWE's presentation for a long time is camera cuts. Right. Well, how do you how do you get people to quit bitching? You quit cutting the camera. Yeah. So, you know? Um, yeah, and I guess I understand now we got 4K TVs and all that, so it's it's a little easier to see, you know, how much of a punch it was. But, you know, let us just let us believe and give us the reality of it and let yeah. us go with it. If we want to have well, fun. We're going to have fun. We want to enjoy it. We will. That's the problem with being smart wrestling fans, but the benefit of being smart wrestling fan, the problem with being smart wrestling fans is we know so much. The mm -hmm. benefit of being a smart wrestling fan is when we see something new, innovative, good, we know that we just saw something that was new, innovative, or good. You right. know, something different. Um, and speaking of different, because AEW is different these days, uh, Okada wins the international title. No shocker there. Wins it clean in the ring. No shocker there. Uh, beats Eddie Kingston, one, two, three. But not for the IGPW heavy, heavyweight title. Not for the Ring of Honor heavyweight title. and Or strong title, excuse me, a Ring of Honor heavyweight title. Instead, only for what AEW has called the international title or intercontinental title, whatever it is. No, it can't um, be that one. Because <laughs> Orange Cassidy has the, the other title, one. title, is that what it is? Or Seems Orange like... Cassidy had the other one. 
before Roderick Strong. Hold yeah, on. I can't keep up. I can't keep One. up with all these names of championship belts. Is it Continental? Yeah, I, Okada won gold. Let's see, winning winning the AEW Continental title. Yeah. Excuse me, not Intercontinental. Yeah, that would have um, caused and, a, a little bit of a problem. And Roderick Strong is the international champion, and then there is a TNT champion, and then there's the world champion. So you see where I get it confused when you don't pay attention. But the question is, does it mean anything? Does Okada winning a Continental Championship mean anything? When the Continental Classic isn't until December at World's End, now he's going to carry this belt? Or is yeah, he truly going to do means, belt collecting? It means he's right in the middle of it from the start. I, I mean, and I know there's a lot of different options for titles for him to have, but he got one just immediately. Yep. And it's like, this is the first of many. And I think that's the statement it makes. And it's like, don't think of him as the Continental Champion because pretty soon he's going to be something else. Well, my whole thought is, honestly, you know, I agree with you. You insert him into the mix immediately. And the other thing about it is with Okada, they paid $4.5 million. He will not be sitting on the bench. Right. Yeah, I mean, this is a man considered one of the best wrestlers in the world for a very long time. He will not be sitting at home. Now, we both know they pay plenty of wrestlers in AEW to sit at home. Because you don't see them. Right. All of a sudden, you see them, and then for months, they're gone. And you're like, hey, what happened WCW to that WCW effect, yeah. Very much so, because they have so many people and not enough not enough television time. But somebody they're featuring along with Okada is Takeshita, and he and Swerve will be wrestling next week. They are absolutely heating Swerve up to be the biggest baby face in the company. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but Don Callis comes out. He's with Takeshita. Great move, because Don Callis can talk. And Takeshi, of course, is Japanese, so the language right. barrier there. But now they've got him lined up, talking about he's going to take on Joe, meaning Swerve. Here comes Callus, interrupts. Joe's out there. So now they're going to have a match, Takeshi and Swerve. Real going to be a very good match. And it's, it, you know, obviously Swerve's going to win this because they're heating him up to get to Joe. Um, but I think it's going to be huge if they let Swerve if the creative is put the title on Swerve at double or nothing in Las Vegas, because that's their big tent pole pay per view, that's mm -hmm. what I would do. And I would let Nana dance his ass off um, because that's the most entertaining part of, of the entrance, anyway. Um, and then the last thing. I love thing Swerve. I love that he's getting, he's getting pulled up a little bit. I mean, I love seeing him in, in person. I think he's, he's got the crowd behind him and he's got a lot of potential. Organically, too. It's yeah. not being forced on people. Right. Swerve is winning the crowd over week after week, myself included. Mm -hmm. um, but between him and Nana, the presentation, the the move set that he has, he looks like an impactful professional wrestler. So yeah. Yeah. very impressed with Shane Strickland. The the ones you do know, 50-year-old Copeland, Adam Copeland, formerly Edge, and Christian, a street fight in Toronto for the this TNT title. Good. And it was good. It was back and forth, lots of spots, hockey fights, whatever. And, of course, the Christian family comes out to try to help. And um, we've got Daniel Garcia and Matt, whatever his name is, formerly of the Jericho Appreciation Society, helping stave that off. And we get some chair shots and we get some table. Then, of course, we get the I quit. I guess it was an I quit match or whatever. But anyway... Adam Copeland is your new TNT champion. Uh, that's Edge for those of you playing along at home. That's they were good. able to t take out the former Luchasaurus as well as Nick Wayne and his mama. And the uh, <laughs> crowd, crowd went wild. And then you had another hour of Rampage, which quite frankly I did not watch. Um, it looked like they had another bl bloodbath between um, – oh, the, we're talking about women's wrestling. It was Julia Hart and Sky Blue versus Chris Statlander and Willa Nightingale in like a hardcore match. And How many they did matches this... have they had over and over again? That well, is they the did hot this, match. They did this double tax spot where Statlander ate the tax. Then she ends up submitting to Julia Hart's submission. You know, I mean, just a lot of different things they had going on. But lastly, because I know we're over our segment time, and that's okay. The producer can't yell at me. SmackDown, Cody and Roman confrontation before Philly. It's supposed to be one-on-one. -on -one. There's no rock. 
But as you might expect, if you've watched the Bloodline or professional wrestling at all in your life, the Bloodline is there. Uh, they're they're in street clothes. But Cody, being the smart guy that he is, like his daddy when he teamed up with Magnum back in the day, has uh, Seth Rollins and Jay Uso there with him to stave off the Bloodline attack. And we're getting it heated up to go to Philly. I've uh, I've made my thoughts perfectly clear. I think Cody wins with some help from The Rock by accident or on purpose, but I think they finally let Cody finish this story in Philly, Terry. It's been a long time coming. What do you think on that side of things? Does Cody yeah. win? I not? think it's time. I mean, for a long time, it's probably been a year we've been thinking this has got to be the end of the bloodline. This has got to be the end of the bloodline, but I don't see any other way around it. It's got to be the end of the bloodline now. And it's Cody's turn. It just is. It's time for this to happen. But having said that, shut up. It is time to move along. <laughs> Cuz we got a lot on the plate tonight. So We do. So you put a lot of notes in here about the football stuff. Um yeah. a lot about the ACC. It's a lot about the same kind of stuff we talk about with you know, we got spring practice starting. But we are going to remain in the court system with a lot of stuff. Um, yep. Florida State and Clemson suing the ACC over their exit policy. They're trying to get out. These are the only two teams, as you documented here, that have reached the four-team college football playoff since 2014 when it was during its inception. And, and not to interrupt you, but they're the only two teams in the ACC as of late to have won national championships. That's right. Clemson's yeah. got two. And, of course – Florida State has one, you know. And we keep we, hearing rumors shame. about Miami, but I haven't seen them show up yet. <laughs> Terry <laughs> hates Miami, folks. As a reminder, <laughs> it's one of the things that bind us together is our mutual hatred for Miami. But, yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but they're the only two teams no, in the right. ACC that have competed for and won the national championship. Right. Um, and, and, I mean, hell, Clemson beat Nick Saban. Roll Tide, because you know I'm going to get it in. So Pretty bad, they too. Mu must have had a pretty good football team that yeah. year when they put it on them. You know, they in the did. It wasn't, game. They didn't squeak by. That, that was an embarrassment. Not honestly. at all. But the biggest thing is, they've. Th this is what it is. It's television money meets what's already prepaid, what's agreed to, and there's nobody but a judge that's going to settle all this because right. of the multiple contracts and the facets to it. We've put some links up. We can always send those out on social for our fans to read the articles if they want, Terry. But, you know, the Big Ten and the SEC have agreed to uh, revenue up to 2031. And according to the ACC, that's going to put them 40 to $50 million behind. What that also does, as you probably are aware, NIL. So the 40 to $50 million behind is what they're saying is NIL money. They're talking about money that you're going to pay somebody who's a student athlete to come play right as nick saban said there are no student athletes any longer sir that's it's just the way it is there are no longer student athletes but but how does that relate so so i'm kind of curious there because this is a definite lawyer thing it's like technically and the ncaa has pushed this these are third parties right these are not correct these are They're not, not the, the school. school paying it's not the school i correct. wonder how that plays into this but what I'm saying is NIL is you're talking you're forty fifty million dollars behind. Yeah. The university is funneling that money back into the football program in some right. way, shape, or form. Um, and as Nick Saban had said too, and and you and I've had this conversation, so I won't revisit it. Big programs fund little programs at college universities. Uh, you went to plenty of Auburn football games at Jordan Hare Stadium, and as you have told us, soccer tickets were free because yeah. they wanted people to go to the soccer game and That's didn't right. rely on soccer income. No offense to anybody that plays football outside of this country, but they didn't rely on that income. Jordan Hare Stadium being full with 90,000 fans was enough. Mm -hmm. That funded the soccer program or the women's basketball or right. the men's basketball before they were good. You know, I mean, there's probably a lot even of still now. I mean, I, I don't, Honestly, if we and really went into basketball Nebraska, economics, yeah. Nebraska Kentucky the may be the only team in the SEC that even breaks even in basketball. I yeah. may be wrong about you, that. If you look in the Big 12, what is it, Kansas? Maybe? 
um, yeah. when they were a blue blood. Oh, we'll talk about Kansas later. <laughs> oh, my God. They got that ass whooped. But bottom line on the football is you've got the suits with the NIL. You've got the you've got the actual injunctions filed yeah. um, that we talked about two weeks ago. Now you have the Clemson and uh, Florida State, your two big powerhouses in the ACC, saying we want to leave, or at least we want to have the ability to leave. Um, so you got a lot going on and we always joke, Terry, that we don't have anything to talk about football, but this is the stuff that ultimately is going to affect what we watch come August and September. We'll have plenty to talk about probably July. I'm thinking we're going to have like a month long run up and we'll figure out those details. I'm sure right at the last minute, as we always do, maybe the producer will be uh, back from gallivanting around Europe and help us figure that out a little. Beforehand. Well, if you're talking July, she's going to be as, as are we coming well, off the trip to we Sin might need City, to figure baby. it out before we head to Vegas. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, let's move along. Let's start talking basketball because that's a big story. Um, first round stories. Uh, I'll go ahead and get it out there. The SEC was not looking great in the first round. Um, you know, Late Alabama won. Alabama looked fine. Um, Tennessee looked fine. Tennessee. I think there's no doubt Tennessee is the best team in the SEC this year. So I think they're showing it in the tournament. They might have lost in the conference championship tournament. as But as I've been telling Auburn fans for the last few days, a conference championship in basketball means nothing at all. So get over yourselves. You did not show up for round one. You got a selfish player. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm not going to delay. Chad baker Mazzara. Critical player down the stretch for Auburn. Put in a lot of minutes, scored a lot of points, played some good defense. Three minutes into this ball game, he's running back on defense, and he looks over and he just jabs his his elbow right into the gut of this guy. Now, apparently, a few seconds earlier, the guy hit him in the throat or whatever. Okay, that sucks, but you know, you just got thrown out of the game. Out a, of the NCAA championship tournament game, by yeah, the way. Yeah, a huge game. And three minutes in, and your team ends up losing by two. Yep. And, you know, Auburn fans, Auburn fans keep wanting to complain about the refs. They keep wanting to complain about why were we playing in Spokane, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? You didn't get the job done. That's all that matters. You can say all this other stupidity. But the only thing that matters is you didn't show up and win. You had a selfish player. And there was, and I pulled a little bit of a quote here. The day before the tournament, there was an article from the Montgomery Advertiser with this player, Chad Baker Mazzara. The title of this, Why Chad Baker Mazzara Has No Problem Being the Bad Guy for Auburn in the NCAA Tournament. Well, I think they meant a little bit something different than what it ended up with, because that could describe how it ended up. His quote, that's me. I'm the first villain on the team. They know this. I'm the one guy. If I have to be the bad guy for us to win, then I'll take that role. Well, guess what? You were the bad guy. You probably were a big factor in the loss. So you might want to look in the mirror and start improving yourself before next year and quit being so selfish. Had to get that out because I'm tired of Auburn fans making excuses. Back to you, yeah, it was sir. pretty. Uh, it was no, you're good. It was pretty bad. You win the SEC tournament, which we've talked about. The SEC was a conference of attrition. Bruce Pearl is a fantastic coach. Auburn hung pretty well with Tennessee and Knoxville. Again, no reason to relitigate right. that, but that's a game I actually saw and was very excited to watch because you know you're an Auburn fan. You're mm-hmm. my friend, so I'm gonna watch the game. We're gonna I'll talk right. to you about it, and I and and I gave you my thoughts on it. You know that they just. Tennessee in that on that day had a little bit more talent. Now yeah. they get bounced early in the tournament. Auburn takes advantage. They win the SEC championship. You would think you'd be able to roll that momentum into the big tournament. And unfortunately, they were one of the teams on the outside looking in. And uh, Auburn, Kentucky, Cal Perry yeah. has not had a good run in the last couple of years. Um, you have a note here, one win in the past five years in the tournament. This is a man who sends players to the NBA every year. Yeah. Can't can't win an NCAA tournament game. Right. Um, now, COVID and then was you, probably part of that. Uh, I think they just didn't have it one year or whatever. But, but I mean, it, it doesn't account for all of it. No, and then you look at Kansas, like you've got a note here. 
Bill Self's team bounced by 21. 21 points. And I get Gonzaga's good. Don't get me wrong. I get that your starting guard, I think it was, or your shooting guard was Mm -hmm. out of the game. But to see a Bill Self team get beat by Houston a few weeks ago by 30, and then in the tournament get beat by 21 by Gonzaga. Um, and, and then he won, comes out and he says he won a he national admits, championship two years ago. Yeah. He admits that he's looking at next season, and that's caused some problems in the last few weeks. And I don't I don't get that. It's like no. that's he knows better than that. You play the games in front of you, you coach the games in front of you. Yeah. And if you're not coaching them, you're losing them. It's that simple. If you're not playing them, you're losing them. So just my thoughts, Terry. If you're not playing them, you're losing them. Well, let's let's give a little bit of a status here on where we are forming the Sweet 16 on the men's side. Um, I took the notes as late as I could to figure out which teams are there. In the east, we have Iowa State and Illinois. Um, in the west, we've got North Carolina and Arizona. Uh, in the south, we've got Marquette and NC State, who's an 11 seed, making the Sweet 16. Rolling, Midwest, baby. It looks like we've got Purdue, Tennessee, Creighton, and Gonzaga. Currently, there's a couple of games happening right now. This gives you an idea of when we're recording. Um, Duke is putting it on James Madison with 10 minutes left in the game, 71-46. And um, Clemson and Baylor. Clemson, almost halftime, has a seven-point lead over Baylor. So that would be a lower seed. Yeah. Let me help you out here, Terry. Uh, Did I not refresh? you did not do beat did James not. Madison. <laughs> Duke beat James started. Madison, 93 okay. to 55. Go Dukies. They're my North Carolina team. Purdue wins 106 to 67 over Utah State. Yeah. Um Alabama right now is ahead of Grand Canyon by four. And uh Clemson and um Baylor. Clemson's still Clemson still got the lead up. over Baylor. In Clemson second is half. up fifty-two to forty-three right now, Sunday night as we record this. But well, we've Grand had a Canyon's few good, looking good. Twelve seed. Had a yeah, had a few really good games. Some surprises. The Wolfies doing their thing. Maybe trying the, to be that spoiler. And then the it, game did last they beat night. Kansas. Is that who they beat? So, um, see the players get pissed off and and throw the ball. Yeah, Kansas got beat by Gonzaga. Okay, so who did Grand Canyon just beat? Mm, hold on, and I'll tell you. I don't have the bracket in front of me. Somebody knows it by heart, but that was not me. Whoever Grand Canyon played got ticked off that they were getting beat. And they're playing Bama right now. Right. And they, and, they beat uh, Southeast Missouri? Okay, well, no. I'll have to look at it later. I'll have to look up the clip, but there was a clip I saw earlier where somebody was ticked off and threw the ball at one of the Canyon players, one of the Grand Canyon players, like from 10 feet away, just overhanded. St. Mary's. Just Saint overhanded Mary's. hurl at him. So that's a clip I have to look up if anybody knows what I'm talking about, obviously. I don't, but it was an interesting clip. But uh, we've got uh, most of our Sweet 16. Uh, now's a good time to plug the second chance bracket because if you – I don't know, picked Auburn to win the whole tournament and they lost in the first round. You might want a second chance. We had a I picked first Nebraska chance to win. <laughs> Nebraska, Terry, and they lost by 12. My boys did not show up against A&M, but the girls did, and then they lost today. But, uh, no, we need you all playing our second chance bracket. We want to have a good time. We know that this is this is now you've pared it down to 16. Mm-hmm. Pick your sleeper if it's NC State. Pick your all-out favorite if it's the University of North Carolina or Purdue or Duke or whoever. We want your participation. Terry wants your participation. And uh, we want to try to redeem ourselves because both of us. <laughs> well, technically, so right now I'm I'm showing in second place, but that max points is pretty low because I'm about to lose five built-in. I've got five built-in losses ahead of me that Auburn before that yeah Auburn. before yeah. And, and I'm yeah I'm the same way so we do the second bra- second round bracket it'll be a good time um you know I think that we're gonna see some really good games coming down next yep. weekend 
Um, that always how the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight work is that you get the better games as you start to pair these teams down, start to get some momentum. They get a little rest because you know they're only playing every other day at this point. Yeah. But yeah, play our, play in our bracket. It'll be on our social media. TNA top ten. It's the ESPN bracket, same as the original bracket. Right. Um, we'll try to I throw it out weird... there on a daily basis until it's time to not be able to sign up anymore. And as bad as we chance. look, as bad as Terry and I look, I I sent him something on social. I'll tell all of our fans real quick, Terry. There are somebody put the stat out. There was ninety eight hundred brackets where nobody got a game right. So I don't know what the hell y'all were doing. I picked Nebraska because I don't bet against my boys ever. And Terry will tell you this. I know they taken an ass whooping in the horseshoe in October this year because they're on the schedule with Ohio State. But guess what? Fuck Ohio State today, You're tomorrow, and forever and go and go big red because I'm That's picking right. the Huskers. Pass me the Kool-Aid. Let's go. But, uh, you know, my real pick is UConn, if anybody cares. Well, My that's real what it's going to be in the second this is chance UConn. bracket. Yeah. Yeah, it's UConn. Oh, they look And the reason it's too. UConn is they're rested, they're overlooked. People are like, oh, they're not as good as they were. Bullshit, they're the national champion from last year. I think they play basketball pretty well, you know? Well, speaking of Maybe. overlooked, uh, I think that's a pretty good segue, sir, because <laughs> we did um, we did a top we, 10 last whoa, year. Whoa, 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 whoa. We uh-huh. Okay, listen, we we presented, okay, you were part of that part. We presented a top 10 <laughs> last week that was top 10 sitcoms that Terry thought of. Okay, so I created it. I did the same process I've done up until this point. Normally, I can Google for lists. This one was way too much to just do that. And um, we thought, well, <laughs> Terry kind of screwed that up. Let's do a second list. That includes shows that Terry didn't think of, and that's what we're doing this week. But guess what? We've already thought of at least 10 or 15 other shows that didn't get through. You know what? Get over it. It's not going to happen. If if you, if you your favorite show ever is not on one of these two lists, we don't care. That's our nah. disclaimer. J- just get well, over it. We're, we're, not, we're is, not capable of doing this, apparently. This is what I will say, but Terry is correct. We don't give a fuck. He's a lot politer about it than I am. <laughs> but um, I, this is what I will say about it. There's way too damn many sitcoms. <laughs> there are. It's like, <laughs> could I have picked something very vague to do at the last minute? Let me, I took notes on my phone. Let me, let me tell you. So I went through, I thought of some other shows. So when we gave this list to our, our Ram Network guys on our chat, Wrestling were, and more. Plug and we'll it, get, learn it, love we'll it. We'll give some more it. details about what's coming up on that later. But, but um, this time we only got one complaint, and that was from Justin Davis. And what what do you call him, sir? That awful Justin Davis. Okay, so that awful Justin Davis said we're step by step, and I meant to look up names here, but like I said, I think of these things and I never go do them. Step by step made me think about my two dads because Mm -hmm. we got the same. And that was, that's possibly my first ever TV crush as a kid. That girl that was in both of those. And see, I should go look up her name, but I can't remember what it is. Right. Anyway, I got this thing about redheads, apparently. We know that. We talked about Becky Lynch earlier. So then when I thought about that, Paul Reiser was on that. So I'm like, oh, we didn't pick Mad About You. Okay, so I don't know if that's nope. a sitcom, but it's a show. And um, I thought about According to Jim, which we didn't include. Charles in Charge. We got Happy Days, but we didn't get Joni and Chachi. We didn't even put the Brady Bunch in there. What I'm saying is, oh, and the Torkelsons. That was brought up because I was talking about my TV crushes because... Man, that was a definite TV crush, that little girl from the Torkelsons. But anyway, we will move along from that. But I'm just saying, I'm running down several that you're not going to hear and you're never going to hear because we're done with this after today. We're not doing it anymore. I've got one that's even worse than any of them Terry just mentioned for all of our listeners my age and possibly Terry's, but probably closer to mine. It was one of the TGIF lineups. It was Boy Meets World. 
with yeah. Corey Matthews as the main and character. Topanga. Topanga. Everybody loves Topanga. And, of course, Mr. Feeney, the greatest teacher there ever was on television. And somehow, wrestling guys missed a show that had Vader and Jake the Snake and Brother Love on it in cameo of <laughs> and that now so, that reminds me of learning the ropes. Not that that's going to be in anybody's top ten, but Lyle Alzado yeah. is a wrestler. Yeah, but we missed Boy Meets World, and they liked it so much. Twenty five years later, they did Girl Meets World about the oh, dog. Well. People yeah, are just going to have to get over it because this week's look, top ten. When we do dramas before Terry goes forward, we're going to do them by decades starting in the 80s because drama 43 minutes serious show that's the criteria submit your hate tweets to t weave 79 he is the person who is guilty for all of this now sir since i have advocated my responsibilities on this show to you we can move forward with top 10 list. so let me put it this way i posted something to facebook yesterday that said a winner is a loser who tried one more time we're going to have to try a few more times because we kind of screwed this one up. Anyway. Well, and here's the deal. This is the real the real deal because we're having fun being cheeky about this whole thing. It was too big of a damn topic. We have learned from that. We will not pick a topic that large again. Yeah, we will. If we do pick a topic <laughs> that large, we are going to narrow the scope because it's just too broad to get there. Yeah. Okay? We'll now, figure it out. <laughs> there's a couple. Yeah, well, I had a bad job. I'm just going to let that roll. Terry, All to right. the top ten. Top 10 sitcoms that Terry didn't think of, which doesn't include the top 10 or 50 sitcoms that Terry, Allison, and Andrew didn't think of. That's a thing that Correct. you'll never see. Anyway, number 10, Home Improvement. There you go. Home Improvement, love this show. I, I think Great it deserves show. a little, little higher rank than top 10. But everybody remember, you talk about TV crushes for some of these breeders out there. Heidi, the tool girl? Come on now. Everybody oh, loved yeah. Heidi. Well, you got to remember, Pamela Anderson was on this at the start. Yep, and you've got, like I say, Home Improvement. You've got uh, Wilson, the neighbor, of course. Yep. You've got Wilson, the boys. Wilson, that's his name. Yeah, Wilson, of course, Tim and and uh, Al. I don't think so, Tim. Howdy, ho, one neighbor. of the best lines. Yeah, one of the best lines, though. I don't think so, Tim. Al Borland. Um, and, and just a lot of fun, you know, uh, they they dealt with some yeah, semi serious issues in the yeah. latter episodes, but um, really really enjoyed Home Improvement. Thought that thought it was a fun show, pretty clean show. You mm -hmm. know, obviously there were some adult jokes in there too, but it it wasn't anything you'd be worried about your kids watching or anything right. like that. Cheeky um, stuff. Yeah, I thought it was great personally. I thought it was a good show. It was number but, nine. King of Queens. I mean, come on. It's, uh, There's been a lot of shows to try to, to match this. Fat guy with hot wife. Come yeah. on, that's been a pattern that they've attempted, but nobody's done it as well as this. I mean, maybe, nah, I... maybe adding Frank Costanza in here, <laughs> you know, maybe that's a big plus for him because he was a great character. I know it's yeah, Frank I mean, Costanza. Nah, but Gary they were Schiller. so... They were so good, though. Stiller was great as the dad. Yeah. Um, of course, Kevin, what's his face? Uh, the, I can't, I, I'm Kevin staring James. right at James. Thank you. Um, as Doug, great. His wife, fantastic. She was also in Saved by the Bell down the line, you know, before, oh, the, yeah. before King of Queens. Um, you know, just a kind of a fun, fun show. You know, nothing... Again, it's a sitcom. It's nothing stupid, serious, and that sort of thing. It was, it was good, and it. I mean, this is all '90s television, is really what we're landing on so far, buddy. You're two for two. <laughs> I don't remember what the top ten were. I put it in place, but I, I. I don't look. Full disclosure, fans. I don't look. You're getting the natural reaction from me. So if you don't like it, I don't know what to tell you. Wait till Number next week. Eight. Maybe I'll do better. Full house. Let's go, go back a little bit farther. And I love Full House. Little, How probably not as much of a crush on DJ here, but um, a little bit. It was a TJ. It was a TGIF lineup, and it set us all up for the greatest rib in the history of television. And that's the Bob Saget is a filthy, filthy man who we all thought was Danny Tanner. 
I mean, every one of us did until you saw his ladder work, his stand up, whatever. And then there was that movie. I forget what movie it was where he plays the dad and he just starts cussing and hot, whatever, you know. Um, Oh, he was um, he was in Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, whatever it was. Yeah, Yeah. I never saw that one. I saw Dumb and Dumber, the original. Yeah, yeah. Dumb and Dumber was when they didn't even have the original cast it was right 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 yeah but bob saget the greatest rib ever is he's filthy dirty comedy and we all think of him as danny tanner you know yeah, <laughs> always giving dj or michelle advice or i forget what uh what's her name's uh it was dj stephanie and and uh michelle michelle yeah yeah and then of course you got john stamos best line out of the damn uh damn roast and i forget which woman said it she said i didn't come here to roast bob saget i came here to fuck john stamos it might have been betty white i don't remember <laughs> but the roast of bob saget um well then you got to think about dave coulier yep. had a whole album written about him by alanis morissette that people don't realize all those songs that that came out when i don't know how old i was i don't know what year that was but that was all about dave coulier yeah Yep, and and like I said, you saw the Olsen twins, and then Lori Joplin. Um, isn't that her name? Joplin, Lori Joplin, Lori Laughlin. Laughlin, excuse me, Lori Laughlin. Yeah, she's the one who's cheated apparently to get her kids in school or whatever. But uh, more on that some other day. But yeah, Stamos. I mean, it was a great show. Like it yeah, just was definitely. a fun, great show. And, and then the goofy. idiot named Kimmy. Yeah, it's just, the same pattern. It's a goofy show. It's not realistic. They don't try to be realistic, and it's funny. And you don't have to think too hard of it. No, and you weren't concerned about what was and was not offensive. Right. We just watched the TV. You know, you just watched it. Number seven, sir. Number seven. Everybody loves Raymond. Yeah. No, oh, Ray no. Romano. And uh, I got to tell you, the stars of this show, in my opinion, are his parents. Thank God you said that because I was going to. I oh love. Goodness. I love his mother. His oh, it's mother nothing like so much. <laughs> nothing like when they took the big spoon off the wall, and you could tell it was cleaner behind the big spoon. And mm-hmm. her kitchen walls have been dirty from years of getting filthy, and she was just so embarrassed about that. Oh man, yeah, I love it's so good. Yeah, and and it was a fun show too. It was, and not, again. Nothing serious. Nothing. This is a, after a day at work. You sit down. You watch TV with. The, you eat dinner. You watch TV with the family. Nothing to be concerned about. Nothing that would be. Oh, this is too risque. This is that. That whatever. It was just a good fun TV show. And the the interesting thing about this to me, they had little kids on the show, and they were yep. not the center of the show. Sometimes nope. you would go a whole episode, and I don't think they were even on there, and they were little. So it's like yep. they would just kind of not write them into the episode sometimes. Because, you know, yep. Full House, Michelle was a huge place in the show. Normally the stuff was surrounded the kids and, and their day or Kimmy Gibbler or her stupidity or whatever. But Everybody Loves Raymond had a set of twins that were really young and a sister. And they rarely were the center of the storyline. That's right. And I love the brother that was the cop. He's such an idiot. Uh, what's his oh, name? Yeah. Uh um i forget robert. his real name yeah robert yeah he was so good though in the show um that was a fun one that one belongs on the list of stuff we missed for sure it does number six i went the wrong direction how, how i met your I mo- met your- mother <laughs> yeah how i met your mother suit up terry this one was great this was a show though that suffered from that one bad thing and it's we don't know how to end it you know, so yeah. obviously the premise of the show, How I Met Your Mother, Ted, the main character, sitting there talking with with his kids, telling them about the story of how he met their mother. And it spans, what, eight seasons or something like yeah, that? I, Neil I watched Harris. some of it. I was not really dedicated to watching this one, though. Uh, the redhead from American Pie, whose name escapes me. I mean, this is a great cast. Jason Segal oh, I love is her. in here. Of course, she's a redhead. We've discussed that. Well, and she turned 50 today, according to our buddy Dave in the HSB, if you believe that shit. Allison Hannigan, is that her name? Yep, yep, you got it. American Pie series, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. She's fantastic. Uh, She is a fantastic actress. I mean, she got way past all the thing about flutes, you know? She she (laughs) went beyond that and starred with much more serious stuff. I still loved her as Michelle, but... 
50. 50 years old, that woman is you you, mm-hmm. you talk about timeless, homie. She ain't she don't look 50. Um, but anyway, great show, you know, obviously Robin, Ted, Barney, Doogie the Houser. whole world. I, yeah, which is another love, show that we didn't include. <laughs> no, we did not include Doogie Hauser because it's not a medical show. That's how we're getting out of that one. Well, it's we not a sitcom. Of, yeah, it's a yeah. medical show. Yeah. Um, but you know the little references, like they were making a sandwich. Well, they were really smoking pot, but they were making the sandwiches. Barney suit up the the you know a very gay man, very partnered gay man with children in real life yeah. playing this very. Um, on the prowl, promiscuous yeah. straight man, right? In the show, and uh, you know, they all they all ended up rotating through, you know, different relationships and that sort of stuff. But the thing that hurts this show's the end because they didn't know how to end it. Yeah, and then they it come was out a build I... up. It's kind of like a high school show. You start yeah. a high school show, and then it's huge, and you're like, we can't act like they're in high school for 15 years. What do we do next? Yeah. And this was unless built up South, for a story. Unless it's South Park, and then they're in elementary school forever. You know. Well, so, we'll get into animated series at some point. <laughs> but one smart thing we did do with this, we did not include any animated series. None. We probably should have cut it down a lot farther than that. But that's one thing we did. So we'll set that up later, and we'll probably need to cut that down a bit too. No Futurama, no Simpsons, no South Park, no Family Guy, no American Dad. Not yet. Not yet. That's right. Number five, that 70s show, and I love this one. Red Foreman is who I would be as a dad. You know this. <laughs> bad things happen to me because oh, I have the man. worst luck. No, bad <laughs> things happen to you because you're a dumbass. So listen, I <laughs> sent that very real today. Did I send it to you? You I sent it to me. I sent it to everybody. But yeah. that's one of my favorite things. But one of my favorite episodes is when Eric is driving his grandmother back to – wherever she lived i guess she lived a couple hours away i don't really remember but um they're in milwaukee i think and she's and he's driving her somewhere else well she's just crabby and complaining about everything imagine that red's mom yeah in that way yeah no way right not believable but anyway he had enough and he said you know it wouldn't kill you to say something nice about somebody sometime and then he looks over you like, Grandma? Yeah. <laughs> and she doesn't respond, and then she died. So he's got all this knowledge, and then they have the whole funeral and stuff, and he's talking to Red in the kitchen. And um, he's really nervous to tell Red that he said that to his mom right before she died. And he said, Dad, I got to tell you something. Right before she died, I said it wouldn't kill you to say something nice about somebody. And Red takes a second. And then he starts busting out laughing. He says, only you, son. And that was, was one of the funniest things ever. Oh, my goodness. And there's so no, many I'm... different things. So many great characters that they brought. Oh, yeah. I mean, and this is, of course, where Kelso, where where the real-life Ashton Kutcher met his wife, Jackie. Yeah. Um, obviously, Donna, who went on to be in Orange is the... the Another hot red, or, red yeah. Orange is the New Black, right? Yeah, that yeah. I got that right. Orange is the New Black. Yep. She was the main character in that show course we see red kitty for god's sake you can't talk She's about that show without talking about kitty and then we got him in the picture there but the weird ass neighbor from next door donna's bob. dad a uh, bob yeah i don't see bob's so, wife on here but yeah no bob's but she's in, and then of course you've got you know um fez and and like we talked about kelso and hyde um and of course eric uh topher grace so i mean really fun show i you know, loose. You, they dealt with some of the some of real life issues, I guess. But mostly, really they're hormonal teenagers. Most smoke of it was getting caught basement. smoking weed. Yeah, yeah. Because it was a smoke seven. It wasn't legal exactly. anyway. No, not like it is now. Right. Um. But Red, you know, every episode you could count on him calling Eric a dumbass or one of them a dumbass anyway. And um, oh, just like man. Clockwork, he did it. And of course, they put this one on FX. That's not something we really talked about. Right. But if I'm not mistaken, this was an FX show for a long time, whereas, you know, Home Improvement, King of Queens, Full Well, this House. was on Fox originally and then moved to FX. I don't know how yeah. many seasons it was on Fox, though. But Fox plays the edgier stuff was my point. Yeah. The FX, Fox Network, they play the edgier stuff. Right. How I Met Your Mother, I want to say, was on NBC. 
Um, everybody loves Raymond. I want to say was on the NBC network. Yeah, maybe I, think I so. have it that might wrong. Have been CBS. I can't remember. But regardless, I'm, what I'm saying is they were on network television. Yeah, they were definitely you know, on the networks. Yeah. Yeah, and if you have the antenna then you could get them regardless if you had cable or not. So that was a big deal, being on broadcast. Hope your antenna uh, works better than mine does. These basketball <laughs> games have been hard to watch lately. <laughs> Number that four. could be because you're an Auburn fan. <laughs> well, there's that too. Say by the bell. Speaking Yeehaw! of high school show and what do we do with it because it's a big hit. And I picked a picture that has this random guy that works at the, the diner. I don't even remember that guy's Max. name. Max. Ma okay. Max. Max, it was the Max, and he and his name was Max, and he was a magician. So this okay. is right in my wheelhouse. This is after school television, PBS, I think, probably. And this is where Screech um, was really young. Yeah, Dustin Powers. Smaller than and everybody. Of course, AC Slater there, um, yep. Mario Lopez. You got Jesse Spano, you got Kelly Kapowski, Lisa Turtle, Zach Morris, and Mr. Richard Belding, the That's principal. Right. Uh, I told you, buddy, this is my shit right here. Um, <laughs> the the thing is, like Zach Morris had the huge phone. Some of the shit from this show, like he had the huge right. cell phone. Uh, Jesse gets addicted to caffeine pills. You know, she's they're singing the Pointer Sisters. I'm so excited, I just can't hide it. And she's having a damn caffeine. We got the band, the right Zach down. Attack. Yeah, the Zach Attack is back. And uh, you know, Friends Forever came out of that. You didn't think that I knew this shit, <laughs> did you, Terry? I told you this is my wheelhouse. A.C. Slater, the wrestler, you know, fighting, wrestling Needick at Valley. And, uh, of course, Lisa Some of the Turtle. cheesiest sports scenes ever in the history of TV came from Oh, this. dude, they were always bad. Dustin Powers getting uh, ready to wrestle the big guy from Valley, and here comes Slater, <laughs> you know, because his quiche was in the oven or whatever, and he, he started Valley. to cook. Yeah, oh, Valley. Oh, because he had to pass. He was failing, and he had to pass a bunch of classes, and the last thing was home ec. Is that what was happening there? Yeah, they had the quiche. His quiche was in the oven. So, yeah, he, <laughs> he made that whole thing. And then, of course, Richard Belding and his wife had a kid. And I remember The episode, Zach, had the subliminal messages, tried to make everybody fall in love with him, and they played him over the dash guard and, or the uh, announcements, and everybody loved him. And it's, so, yeah, the whole thing was great. But, uh that one was a fun show, and yeah. they ended it right, and then they tried the college years, and let's face it, that sucks. <laughs> Just right, terrible. yeah, they had Bob Golick <laughs> on there. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was interesting. And I guess what what was uh, – you talked about um, from King of Queens. Yeah, so they Leah did Remini. that episode what, what was... where they get, they get the summer jobs at the beach. And she's so the which daughter. Show was that though? Was that just that was Saved, Saved by, by the Bell? bell? Okay. It was Saved by the Bell. Yeah, because remember okay. they actually started Saved by the Bell in junior high school. Haley Mills was the right. teacher, if you remember. Good um, morning, Miss Bliss, or whatever. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, um, yeah. So Saved by the Bell was is junior high school or middle school, and then they went on to high school, of course. Um, Slater comes on. Jesse comes on. You know, and quite frankly, all of them, all of them have had fairly, you know, I guess Lisa, maybe not so much, but the rest of them have had pretty good careers in terms yeah. of what they were able to do. Um, you know, <clears throat> Tiffany Gleason went on to do, uh, what was it? Um, not burn. It was the one about the thief. Uh, I mean, she, the wasn't suit. she on 90210 and Melrose Place? Probably. Uh, if memory serves me correct, that's probably right. But she was also in blue, uh, white collar. She was the wife in white collar. Of course, uh, Jesse did showgirls. Uh, Jesse did showgirls. AC Slater, as we all know, Mario Lopez. He loves your dogs and he loves your silly videos. Dustin uh, Diamond. Lot, I'm not yeah. exactly sure what he's uh done right off the top of my head. Well, he Paul got Gosser, into some stuff, but he he passed away. I don't know how long it's been. Yeah, and Paul Gosser did in NYPD Blue, you know, with Sibowitz yeah. and and the rest. So, I mean, I, it was a pretty good foundational piece for them, and they were all very young. Uh, so many good episodes though of Saved by the Bell, and we've got to move on. But and once I, again, it was I goofy. Love that it was lighthearted. Yeah. When they had issues, it was lighthearted issues. They didn't go too deep, and that's yeah. that's what this time was about on TV. Uh, the No Hope with Dope episode was awesome because you know it's nineteen ninety. You couldn't get no, you couldn't get more nineties than that particular episode of Saved by the Bell. So, anyway, number three, Married with Children, and this, 
I know our crowd boosted this one. This up is because... definitely the Fox um, Fox Network here. Yep. That's not showing up on the other other networks, and it was lighthearted and made fun of just everything. It was excellent. Couldn't couldn't write it today. Yeah. Don't think that the, don't think that that one would survive Al Bundy's sexism. I really don't. The Where no ma'am all, girl. You don't think no ma'am would would be something that would be on TV today? Calls all the women fat, <laughs> and uh, you know oh, the, that's so great though. The, the shoe salesman <laughs> and he's like all these fat broads come in here and try on shoes. <laughs> And, and yeah. then he's, I love they would have those scenes and, and it didn't mean anything. It just added to his, to who he was, where he's some lady sitting there with her kids and trying on shoes. And he's like, well, if you would lay off the ho hos, you know, and all that kind of stuff. It's, yeah. Yeah. It, it's not well, and then, today. And then, then when he comes home, first thing he does, he sits on the couch, he puts his hands right down his pants. I oh, mean, yeah. this was, this was like one of those where they, where it still showed the grittiness of human beings. Like mm -hmm. we joke about some of these shows being silly and fun and whatever, and they are, don't get me wrong, but they weren't showing some of the stuff that married with children, you know, was showing. And of course, Peg would go on to play Gemma in Sons of Anarchy. Cause I just lost Kate, uh, whatever her name is. She's married to the writer for, or was of, uh, Sons of Anarchy. Um, and he did Mayans, Kurt Sutter. She was married to Kurt Sutter. Um, so he wrote Sons of Anarchy, The Shield, and half of Mayans on the FX network. Long time relationship that they've had. Um, but Kate, what's her name? Uh Peg. Seagal. Yeah, yep, Katie Seagal. Kate Seagal or Katie Seagal. Mm -hmm. Um fantastic actress absolutely fantastic i loved actress. her and once again another redhead had a thing for her too and there's kelly <laughs> bundy sitting there but I, I still had a thing for the redhead yeah but no anyway. you can tell our crowd boosted this one up though the people we associate <laughs> with the vote they weren't so much saved by the bell people they were uh married with children thank you timmy c for your participation in this week's poll uh <laughs> number two fresh prince of bel-air there we go there we go and West this was Philadelphia, fantastic. This did dig raised. into some stuff several times, but yeah, it was lighthearted a lot too. But it, it was good. I mean, Uncle Phil it was, a, was fantastic. I think it was a nice balance and juxtaposition because Uncle mm -hmm. Phil, of course, being the judge, he's also Solomon the Wise, and right. you, you get Carlton the Goof doing the Carlton, Carlton. dance, and we're gonna break that out in Baltimore. We <laughs> Silver all Spoons. Do the There's one we, we didn't think of. We see, I'm seeing Carlton all these dance. actors, and I'm I'm seeing. Um, Show, thinking about shows they were in before and there's yet another one we didn't include yeah and the whole idea of will smith going to move with his uncle and then having the the like we talk about the goofy carlton dances and the shenanigans they would do and then that one real powerful scene about how his father leaves him and yeah. phil phil you know accepts it and lets will cut they cuss on television he yells yeah. at him phil hugs him it's a big deal of really nice cathartic experience for the audience but not something you saw in the nineties all the time, you know, or the late. Well, that was Could after both, he yelled you know? at him, "You're not my father," right? And all this stuff because he was trying to give his dad a chance, and Uncle Phil's warning him. He's like, yeah. "You're not my father," and made a big deal out of it. And if you go to episode, we talk about how goofy Fresh Prince was, but that's the episode everybody remembers. That's right. That's the one that stands out. Well, that and Jazz getting thrown out on his ass over. <laughs> <laughs> But I did love that show. I thought it was fantastic. It was and a catchy yeah. song. I mean, that might that might be a list on its own. It's oh, inter song. yeah, songs for TV shows? Absolutely. But, all right, so before we reveal it, we already had one number one last week, which was the Golden Girls. We're not going to pin them up against each other. but Bang, bang, with this a bullet, week, homie. This number week's one. number one, Big Bang Theory. Oh, Interesting. Interesting. I'm sensing that that's not propped up by you. I did not prop up the Big Bang Theory. They did okay. make the top ten list, but I do, I do enjoy Sheldon and Penny and uh, what's her name? The, the uh, um, because Penny's the hot one. Whatever the the girl, the other nerd is, and and the whole interaction is fine. It's Amy Farrah Fowler. Yeah, and thank you. 
I have uh, I have seen some of these episodes. I have not seen all of these episodes. Lead into Dynamite. Yeah, I do think I, I like Young Sheldon better personally. Yeah. I've seen more of those episodes. It is much different show though. It's it's very, very much yeah. <clears throat> much different. But you guys had told me that's not really a sitcom, and I'm like, well, some of it's funny, but then you know you think about it and right. some of it's not so funny. Um but I would not and I'm gonna go on record right now. You wanna go head to head? Golden Girls versus Big Bang? It ain't even close. I don't think the Golden so Girls win again i think so um, yeah but i again i i went on my but i would not have week. put big bang on top of this list either though i mean that's no. that's my deal <clears throat> yeah i i'm obviously you heard it i'm a saved by the bell guy um right. you know that's kind of my thing because it was just it's just right in that nostalgia for me but the the golden girls i said it last week you'll never find four actresses available at the same time with the same with those personalities that pulled those characters off, it will never happen. And it was women, exclusively women, and that's what made that one special. That's right. And they would talk and, about like Rose would talk about Charlie. Yeah. And we would, you know, once in a while Dorothy's ex husband would show up. But... Stan. Yeah, Stan. <laughs> but anyway, that's last week. You can see if you're on YouTube, you can see the top 10. I have it displayed here. I'm not going to run back through them. We just went through all of them. But, you know, that's the list that I didn't think of. But, you know, there's others. It's a pretty, pretty good list. And we, we already named more that we forgot, you know? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a lot of good shows. I mean, there's yeah. been a lot of good TV throughout history. Um, and this is a lot of it. Yep. But, sir, let, we need to move along a little bit now, and I believe that you have once again taken the um, taken the lead on our champ of the week, and um, I'm going to let you take take it here and tell us about this guy, and I'll let you be all dramatic about it. All dramatic. I'm not very dramatic. Uh, I <laughs> have an artistic. I have an artistic flair, but I'm not dramatic. I just tell it like it is, and it hurts people's feelings. That's the drama in my life. Anyway, champ of the week, Mark the Hammer Coleman. Some of you know him as the first heavyweight UFC champion, national wrestling champion at the Ohio State University. Because we're talking about our champ of the week, I will give that school one time that name. Uh, 1992 Olympian, and he is considered the godfather of ground and pound, was featured in those first fights when people weren't sure what UFC is, mixed martial arts, ultimate fighting. Again, first heavyweight champion was the 2000 Pride Grand Prix champion, and he was a member of the very first UFC Hall of Fame class. All of that, fine and well, not why he's the champ of the week. Why Tell he us is the why champ he's of the... the champ of the week, sir. Tell us. Two, two weeks ago, his parents' house caught fire, and he saved both their lives, risking his own, mm -hmm. and he has come out of the ICU. He had smoke inhalation, very severe, burned his lungs, burned his eyes. But he saved both his mom and dad. Now, his dog, unfortunately, died in the fire. His dog's name is Hammer, um, longtime companion of, of Mark the Hammer Coleman. But he saved both of his parents and risked his own life doing so to the point where he was on death's door in ICU. And uh, what a selfless and heroic act that is. Going back into a burning house, not knowing if you're going to make it out, but loving somebody so much that you do so. And this is what he said to TMZ. I'm one of the luckiest men in the world. I can't thank you enough. I'm just grateful. I will continue to motivate people to move forward and be a better version of themselves. You never know when you're going to need it. So let's go. Let's start today. Tomorrow's not promised. Get moving. I a think very that similar... sums up exactly what we're trying to show with this on a weekly basis. He, he That's our message. That quote. It's yeah. our message, buddy, is tomorrow's not promised. Love your people. These are There are people like this in the world. We've talked about Dan Levy. We've talked about um, your, I forget her name, the Be Kind. Sure. Jordan. Um, Jordan. We've talked about Jordan. Now we're talking about Mark Coleman. These are people that do just normal things in their daily lives or something we can all be awed and thankful for that. That's what we're getting at here. Um, but yeah, no, no reason to run back into a burning house. Yeah. 
he risked his own life to save his parents. That self-sacrifice. Amazing. Amazing. Well, Absolutely like, amazing. I mean, realistically, and I'm not going to say what's in his head, but it's one of those things. It's like, why would I want to be here knowing that I could have possibly helped them still be here? Yep. So he said, yep. that's the decision and let's go with it. And you know, Yep. Probably and they, not much hesitation there. Well, and he takes care of them, obviously, yeah. you know, because they, they lived. He takes care of his parents. And um, that's one of those things we certainly, certainly can appreciate. Terry, you have older parents. We know Allison has older parents. We have friends and family members that have. And Allison's know, dad, is, dad is dominating our bracket, by the way. Just, My God, I love it earlier. I might as well throw that out there. George is whooping all our asses. <laughs> Let's be honest. He is. And he not, and it's not like win. me. I'm technically in second place, but I can't do that well. No, he's <laughs> he's got the most potential points and the most current points. He is yep. dominating the bracket. Yeah, it's not close right now. So unless you get some March Madness, and I mean some really crazy shit, George is probably running away yeah. with this one. <laughs> and why not? Look, the producer's dad needs to, it's like he don't have no inside line he's just a new yorker you know how them gamblers are though they pay <laughs> attention to everything so doing the degenerate shit but yeah mark coleman our champ of the week this week works for him because he's the ufc champ and the hall of famer and all of that but That's really right. a great person amazing sacrifice and uh you know something to think about and that quote was great good choice sir uh, really appreciate you talking about it and researching that for us and, and bringing it to the table. So another one that you may not have known about had, had you not listened to us, and that's what we want to bring to you. But well, it's what? good news, and that's the problem, Terry. That's right. The stuff that we're trying to do here is good news, and if you're not talking about genocide and and bad politics and terrorist attacks in Russia and whatever else happened this week, then, you know, it doesn't matter. All we want to see is the negative. And I don't say me and you, but I mean, that, right. that's what, the world. if it bleeds, it leads. They've said it for years in the news right. media. And, you know, we we are open, by the way, on our social medias. If you guys have a champ of the week, let's just wrap it up there. I'll wrap that thought up. If you have somebody you know of, you think is deserving of publicity, of us talking about, of us getting to know and research and think about what, why would, please, Send us a message, DM us, tweet us, X us, send me something on Instagram or Facebook. Yep. Everything's out there. We Everything's on the table. We are more than happy to, to include that, and we will shout you out for pointing it out because Terry and I can't do this by ourselves. We have a lot of help doing this show. Um, Not this week as big, much, but yeah. But we, we, do. we, we do. We rely on people, and I would be more than happy to uh to take any suggestions for champ of the week and see what we can do to make that happen because we want the good news out there for people we do and we want to end with a positive we've had a couple of weeks where we talked about it's like yeah it's a positive that people are fighting horrible things but it felt a little bit like a downer even though it was the champ of the week they're championing championing against things that are a real downer and it's yeah. good to have a story that is an all positive top story. So thank you again, sir. But we mentioned our producer. We've added her in the last few weeks. And we've also joined this wrestling and more network Ram. Um, so we want to keep telling you about this. And one thing we want to do every week is tell you what's coming up this week. So obviously this is our show for the week. Filter free podcast. Um, their audio drops on Tuesdays. Uh, same as ours. Um, I believe they seem to record a little bit ahead of a little sooner than we do. Uh, they're doing a watch along of WrestleMania 12. That's going to drop on Tuesday and, uh, you'll see your, a familiar yours, face on that one. Yours truly with a little bit of a run in, right? Just in time to shit on uncle Brett. So everybody's <laughs> aware. <laughs> and we appreciate you doing that for us. Cause we couldn't be there, but anyway, they yes, also sir. have, um, they're going to go over a horrible episode of WCW Saturday night pretty soon. And yep. then they've already planned a WWF from 1975. So you old timers, older even than we are, 
if you remember that old wrestling from back then, you might want to tune into that. Those shows are coming up. We'll let you know more about the details when they drop. And on the other side, talking wrestling with Pondwater Dave, um, those uh, record Tuesday nights on YouTube live. You can be in the audience for those. And I believe that their audio drops on Friday morning. And this week, they are going to interview Barrett Brown. He is the former BIW Southern champion. I believe he just lost that a handful of days ago to Bam Bam Malone, if I did my research correctly. He's also been on AEW Dynamite, where he was um, not treated so well by Wardlow. And he's been on uh, New Japan. So if you want to learn more about this guy, they always have excellent uh, guests from independent wrestling. Um, people that are up and comers, people who've been around a while, promoters. They'll have a comedian once in a while. They always have great guests. The hosts are wonderful. Um, but yeah, check them out on YouTube live. And if you can't do that, then listen to them on the audio when it drops on Friday. Just to add say- one thing to both of those things because terry covered this beautifully these are our friends Mm -hmm. but these are two shows with great chemistry the three on filter free pop tim dave tj excellent together very easy to listen to a lot of fun their segments from box score trivia to karaoke um movies all of that stuff really well done and as terry said talking wrestling led by Super Dave, the man who counted Ric Flair's last match, that awful Justin Davis pretends to be the host, and the shining star of the show, Miss Amy Vaughn. Uh, probably one of the best interviewers that we know personally on podcast. She's very good. So. They do a lot of research. They're prepared. Their segments are on time, all of that stuff. The, oh, I say all that to say this, guys. They're worth listening to. We're not plugging them just because they're our friends and just because they're on the not pop and lock network that I got outvoted, but team wrestling and more, um, not pop and lock, Terry. I know I, I you're judging me. I see I'm that starting. Thing. I'm starting to enjoy pop and lock more now that we've already decided on Ram just to be <laughs> quite truthful with you. Yeah, there you go. It kind of so, does fit. It, it, it really does. If you knew the crowd behind the whole thing, but, um, ultimately, what I was getting at, these are great shows, great chemistry. These guys have a year plus under their belt doing these podcasts. And as Terry said, with talking wrestling, everybody's engaged. With Filter Free, they find shitty wrestling to watch so they can make fun of it and have a good time. And that's, that's right. what makes it work. So there's plenty out there. Believe us. <laughs> so anyway. Disco and Forno. Disco and for- Disco and Inferno Forno. was it. <laughs> <laughs> that one got a lot more risque, didn't it? Anyway, Disco Inferno was in a lot of matches. That's yeah. all I'm saying. That was supposed to be a quick yeah. statement. And it didn't end up being that way. Mm-mm. But bottom line, check them out. Take our word for it. We're going to roll out some things for Patreon April the 1st. No, this is not a rib. It's We know it's April Fool's Day. We're going to do And it. how appropriate if you know this crowd. That's all I'm saying. I moved into an apartment <laughs> on April 1st one time, and my friends were telling me, it's not going to be there when you get there. You're going to be in the U-Haul, and, and you won't even have an apartment. Yeah. <sighs> well, why why do you need enemies when you have friends like us, Terry? That's all I'm saying. We keep you all off. <laughs> anyway, to go along with the network, we're going to roll out. We're going to try to get ahead on some of these fun top 10 lists, um, get them out on social media, let whoever wants to vote. Um, I, I have spent I have spent a lot of emails. I have had a lot of conversation with support with multiple platforms. Um, my buddy, Peter, from India, oh, my Peter, buddy, Peter, me. Peter from India. I'm not sure where he's from. <laughs> But my buddy Peter, I believe, has fixed the bug that was happening on the poll. So I'm a lot more confident. So we're going to put a lot more stuff out next week. Uh, we've already got that one nailed down. We've had it for a little while. Uh, I might put it out this week just to see if anybody else wants to vote on it before we finalize it. I'm not going to tell you what it is till it's out there. Um, and then we'll have more. We're not going to do just one a week. We want to get ahead. We want to put it out multiple times, and then you'll be listening, and you'll and you'll hear something. You'll go, oh, I voted on that two months ago. That's what we want to have. We want to be far enough ahead to do that. So that's our plan, and, um, you know, let's get rolling on it. 
That's all I got and to we say do it, about it. We do it for us, but we do it for you guys. So, again, like Champ of the Week, if you have suggestions for top 10 polls, yeah, we are open to suggestions because the entire premise of this show is a top 10. <laughs> so, and, um, we've proven what doesn't work so great. <laughs> so, when you think about it, try to make it not too broad because we've proven that's not a great idea. Nope. Not so a great idea. If you can nail down some options, that would be just think about it. If Remember, you were trying to come up with all the options, are there going to be 150 of them? If the answer is yes, then that's not the one we want. We can figure it out, though. We, we could knock it down. Just remember, Terry, overweight smoker and drinker, womanizer and carouser, Babe Ruth of the New York Yankees, God's team, led the league in home runs and led, the, led all baseball in home runs for a career. But also led in strikeouts, so we're not perfect. <laughs> he did. He did. Absolutely. Anyway, so, it's been a good show, sir. I did enjoy this list. A lot of great shows on this list. I thought the last episode had a good list, and this episode had a good list. We mentioned other things that we really enjoyed. It's been fun. That's what matters. Who cares about the accuracy? That's not what it's about. It's about entertainment making us laugh, making you laugh, making you think us that we're stupid, you know, whatever it takes. Just keep listening, they, guys. They already know. I'm an ass. That's what I do here. I'm the tits and you're the ass. That's right. Correct. Peaches for days. Hoochie Daddy short season is upon us. Get your work in, boys. They'll be looking. He and she. Whatever the preference. Doesn't matter. I drink red wine, not white wine, as has been well established. Isn't that right, Terry? And I drink stout beer. <laughs> Not that light colored stuff. Anyway, I don't know why that matters, but whatever. So it's been fun, guys. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you, Allison. Oh, yeah, you're not here. You're still in Europe. Perry. Maybe she'll come back. Maybe, maybe we can convince her to come back for next week. God, I hope so. <laughs> God, I hope so. But she's, you know, like words, she's, sir. she's gallivanting. Yeah. So, final yeah, words here it is. Here it is, because we are serious on this show. It's Holy Week. It's Easter Week. Uh, I do want to wish everybody a happy Easter. Mm -hmm. um, know what the season means. Know who did what for you, who died for you, who rose for you. Um, you know, we celebrate Holy Week started today um, with Palm Sunday, and we will conclude with Resurrection Sunday next week. I know that's kind of off topic for someone like me, but it is something very near and dear to me. Um, as a believer and uh, someone who has faith in Jesus as my savior, I wish nothing but the best for everybody for this week. And, um, you know, hopefully you find a minute and uh, figure out whatever that means to you in the next 168 hours Look at the um, math of our day. precious time. So there you are. Terry. All right. Thank you, Take sir, us home, for that buddy. word. That was very important. That's what we both feel. That's what a lot of our friends feel. And as always, <clears throat> love your people. Tell them you love them. Make it weird. See you guys next time. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you for listening. We are TNA Top 10 on all social media. I'm T Weave 79 He's 30, your fan. We're available weekly where you get your podcasts. Like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.